I'm thinking somebody lied. Hauling general freight, you're going to have to scale your load. So we found a scale. I'm going to show you how this works, and I'm going to show you how to adjust your truck to make it work right for you. It's not that hard, but at the same time, a lot of these trucking schools are not teaching their people how to scale. That's one thing I found out when I was training. Their big th line was, you'll figure it out at your job. Well, at that point, it may be a little late, so let's get this figured out. Somebody's having a bad day. Now, I'm going to keep it really easy. Um, there's a lot to scaling a truck depending on the length of the trailer and whether you have a spread axle or, uh, you know, the bridge laws of this, that, and the other thing. We're going to keep it real straight. We're going to talk about just regular two axle trucks, trailers, uh, and a steer axle, five axles total. We're not going to get into any of the particulars because that's a really deep, long rabbit hole. So let's get to it. Now, first things first. For what we're doing, there is an 80,000 pound weight limit total. Truck, freight, trailer, everything. Total, 80,000 pounds. And so that's that. So you have to split that up. No more than 34,000 pounds on your tandems on your trailer. No more than 34,000 on your duals on your tractor. And no more than 12,000 on your uh, steer axle. Now, you add those up, that's 80,000 pounds. As you pull on the scale, this is a triple platform scale. You got that right there, the back, the middle, and the front. And each set of axles is going to sit on one of those scales. Now that's pretty self-explanatory. You hit that little button right there or there, or you can do it on the phone through the app now. As you see here, this guy's pulling on. He's got his front axle on the front uh, platform, and his tandems in the middle on the middle platform, and his trailer on the back. So. He's going to get an axle weight, but not only that, he's going to get a total gross weight. As you can see, each axle is, or uh, each platform, has yellow paint around it, so you know where to be. This is another reason I like atlases. If you're unsure, it's right here in your atlas, right at your fingertips. They have everything from... Uh, well, state, steering axle, single axle, tandem, gross vehicle weights, width, height, straight truck, semi-trailer. I mean, just all the way across. And then they have Canada down here, too. Uh, now, Canada is in metric, but... And then uh, on here, like I talked, there was a uh, bridge table formula by how many axles and how much you, weight you could put. The number of axles, uh, distance between two or more consecutive axles. Like I said, there's a lot to it, and this will open up a big can of worms. But there's a whole formula here, depending on uh, how many feet, the length of your trailer, blah, blah, blah. So it gets kind of crazy, but it can get interesting if you're into this kind of stuff. But, uh, well... Now I know we showed CAT scale a bunch, but what you really want is just a certified scale. Uh, and it's that's the important part. A lot of these scales that these customers are not certified, especially if they're just platform scales. Yeah, you can get your uh, axle weights from a platform scale. You have to use math. Put your steer axle on first. That's your steer, of course put your steer and your truck axle on it and then you'll have a total weight there which should be around 45 46 subtract your steer from that and that's your trailer axle or that's your uh, your drive axles there and then pull the whole trailer on and then take that sum total of 46 and subtract it from the overall and that's your trailer 
And a little trick a lot of guys use is once they pull off, they'll pull off and just leave the trailer axle on the platform and that will uh, show them just the single axle there for the trailer. Now, the reason I say get a certified one is gross weight doesn't discriminate. The, if the axle, if the scale is two or three thousand pounds off, which I've seen, the gross weights are not off. What they really want is the different, what a lot of these places use like chicken plants and lumber plants is they want the difference in weight between the loaded and empty trucks. They're not concerned about the weight of the truck. They just want the difference in weight. And the scale can be off and still give you an accurate. So you want a certified scale and that's why I picked cat scales. But there are many other scales to choose from. Just make sure it's a certified one. On a side note, don't be these guys. This is why uh, people don't want us around in a lot of places. Now, before you start yelling about the steer axle, there's a lot of states that do recognize steer axles as 20,000 pounds as a regular single axle. But there's a catch. Um, if your axle has to be rated for 20,000 pounds and your tires have to be rated for 20,000 pounds, and like dump trucks and whatnot, and the guys with the big old industrial balloon tires, those are 20,000 pound axles. Um, and a lot of states will differentiate on the steer axle. They'll want, uh, you know, so many inches, pounds per inch, and this and that. There's, there's a lot, I, I told you this is a rabbit hole. When it comes to steer, there's a, there's a formula for it. But as a general rule, now if you're 12, 2, 12, 3, chances are they're not really gonna bother you for that. Um, you start getting over 12.3 to 12.4, that's when they start taking notice. So that's just something to think about. Now let's get on to the very first thing before you even get on that scale, and that is your empty weight. Now before you even start, you need to have an idea of what your actual truck weighs. You know, with the trailer. Um, as a, I'm not going to tell you general rule, all these trucks weight. My truck is heavy. Uh, a lot of trucks are a lot lighter. I know full of fuel uh, with the trailer that's a refrigerated trailer is full of fuel. I'm at 36,000 pounds, which means I can haul 44,000 successfully. I, I've gotten 42 in depending on how much fuel I have and all that. That's another rabbit hole. But generally I can haul around 44,000 pounds. Um, you get start getting above 44,000 and it starts getting real dicey for me. So when you have an idea what your truck uh, weighs, you need to look at your bills. This load says this is uh, 43,748 pounds. I know they lie. Uh, I got my cat scale ticket here and uh, it says I'm 79.7. Now, the fact I know they lied is it comes with experience is after a while you're going to know what your truck weighs. So you need to start making a little bit of allowances. They put me on a scale. I scaled out there at the plant where I picked up, but I always go get a second opinion. We'll talk about that later, but let's start looking at the truck. Now this is a typical weight ticket. Um, let me put this down so I can point at some things. You have your steer axle, you have your drive axle, you have your trailer axle, and you have your gross weight. Now this is a certified scale and they do have a guarantee. Now the gross weight is your certified weight because these will move. They can't, you can't uh, you can't really certify that but your gross weight you can um, for the most part but it's not bad if you have to reweigh you uh, give them the weight number here when you go back up and a reweigh is two dollars the scale is twelve um, but this is a uh, what a scale ticket looks like if you've never seen one but so when you scale your truck, you get one of these, and then you can start sliding your axles and moving around from there. Now I'll be the first one to tell you, it's easier to put weight on than it is to take weight off. So once you get your 
truck scaled, I have an air gauge in the truck. I know exactly where it sets. So let's go look at that real quick. This is my air gauge. I'm on a hill, so it's reading a little heavy, but I want it right at the 70 mark. When it's right there, I know I'm close, and that's where I start. Now I'll show you how I get to the 70 mark. When you load and unload, most customers want these axles all the way to the back. That means that when you hook up to the trailer, there's an extraordinary amount of weight on the front. So in order to take the weight off your kingpin, off your front axle, you slide these wheels forward or backwards, however you need, and you use the air gauge to gauge it in general. And when you're close, then you go scale it. Now, when you're moving weight, each one of these holes on this particular style of trailer is about 450 pounds. Um, if you get some of the other trailers, it can be as little as 100 to 200. It can be as much as 5 to 600. You have to know your equipment. But on this style of trailer, it's about 450 pounds. So this is an air slide. So I go over here and make sure the brakes are applied. I push this in like that and these pins will retract and there's four of them on both sides. Now your air slide button can be between the duals or in the front or if you have an older trailer it's either going to be a lift handle or a pull handle if it's a manual setup. So, but the fact of the matter is every trailer has a way to retract the springs. So if you have an air slide like this just make sure you set the brakes because as long as there's air to the trailer you're not going to be able to make it work. So as you can see we slid this about halfway up. We have some room to move backwards and forwards. I have it exactly where it needs to be because I've already scaled it. But if you have to move it one hole there's a trick. Back in the old days when I was working harder and not smarter I needed to move it one hole. I'd pull the pin and just inch it back a little bit and then I'd go too far and have to inch it forward. Well, I got a little older and you can buy stops now or I got a fifth wheel kingpin. If you need to move it one hole, just stick it in there like that and move it back and uh, it will uh, go where you want and apply the brakes and pop it in and should be good to go and you only moved it exactly where you want. Now ideally you don't want to move your fifth wheel. Um, chances are you're going to move it when you get your truck. If it's not a fixed fifth wheel, which most of them are now, if it's an adjustable fifth wheel, you're going to find a spot that works for you. Um, I have a spot on mine. I haven't had to move it since I bought the truck. Whoever owned it before me had it perfect. Just enough on my steer axles right at about 11 and a half to 12 and it balances out just fine up here. But in that rare occasion that you have to move your fifth wheel forward, there's an easy way to do that. Well, it's not easy, but it works. To move your fifth wheel, first thing you have to do is put your legs all the way down. And uh, then you go into the truck here. And there will be a switch right here. Hit that air switch. That air switch will actuate uh, the, the pneumatic ram back there and it will move your pins on your fifth wheel out uh, on your uh, track. And I'll show you that. Let's see if we can get under there and see that. This is the airline and uh, there's a pneumatic ram underneath there that operates those springs. Each one of these will move about 125 pounds. Uh, so it really doesn't move a whole lot. But if you have to move it and put a little bit on your steer axles, that's fine. But chances are, if you're lucky, you'll never have to touch this. But you can move probably, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six. You could probably move eight to 900 pounds if you had to. So once you've got the axle or the landing gear down and the air dropped on this, it should free up, it should uh, not bind. You, cut, you want the fifth wheel to float. So if you can take all the pressure off the fifth wheel, 
just start working it back and forth. You're not going to go too far, and you're not going to, if everything's going right, the fifth wheel's not going to come off. That was one of my big fears, you know, hitting it too hard and everything just going whoop. It shouldn't happen. Um, so just know how many notches you want it to move, and, you know, move it one, maybe two. That should be all you'll need. But eventually you're going to find where you want your fifth wheel to be, and you'll never have to move it, hopefully. But... That's how you move it. Like I said, once you, that happens, hit the get out, check if it's where you want it. Flip the air ram to make sure that the fifth wheel is locked back into place. Lock it first, make sure once you flip the switch back to off, jiggle the truck back and forth to make sure the pins pop back out and are holding your fifth wheel. And then uh, air the truck back up, lift the landing get legs and go rescale. Truthfully, if you're going to be running out west, like to California and all that, that's going to add a little more of a dimensional problem to you because you have to have the center of the rear axle 40 feet from the kingpin. So you have to have your axles up quite a ways. And if you know you're going to California when they ask you to load, say, hey, I'm loading for California, and they'll load you a different way. Now, this is where it gets dicey. You might have 28 or 30,000 pounds on your truck, but you might be at 33.9 on your trailer. That happens. And if you're going out west, there's just nothing you can do. There's no point in going and asking them to reload you because most companies, if you're legal, legal is legal, they don't have time to screw with you. They're not going to reload the truck. They're not going to reload a legal truck just because on a whim. And if they do, they're going to charge you. The sad reality is this, every load is going to weigh differently. I said, you know, it was only 400 some pounds per hole, but you may move one hole and it may go a thousand pounds. It's just how densely the uh, load is loaded. I mean, I've had loads that were 35,000 pounds, but they loaded it all in the front. You know, every 40,000 pound load is going to weigh different. And if you have any questions, especially if you're a company driver, uh, if the company pays for the scale tickets, spend their money. Make sure it's legal because if it's not, it's on you. So it's just, it's trial and error. You know, slide the truck. Hopefully, you don't have to screw with the fifth wheel, but start learning your equipment and figuring it out. And, uh, you know, after a month or two, you'll start figuring it out. There's nothing to it. You guys can do it. So I appreciate it. I hope this has been helpful there's not a whole lot here but scaling a truck is something that's very important you have to know how to do it for this business and you know I gave you the basics and where you go from there is up to you so I appreciate it thanks for watching and we'll see you next video